live from WYLN Hazleton, this is WYLN's late edition, News at 10, with meteorologist Joe Garbachin, sports with Beth Mensinger, anchors Lisa Sugar, and L.A. Tyrone. News, weather, sports, features, and more. You're watching WYLN's late edition, News at 10. Good evening and welcome to WYLN's Late Edition for Monday, September 30th, 2013. I'm Ann Gownley. Tonight, details on the construction happening at the Hazleton Municipal Airport. And tomorrow will mark the first day of so-called Obamacare. We'll have details on that. In sports, Beth Mensinger has this year's football standings as we come to the middle of the high school season. And for a change of pace, L.A. Tyrone will have your weekday forecast. But first, Late Edition's look at tonight's top stories. Hazleton police made an arrest in a garage shooting two weeks ago. Today, this man, 27-year-old Fernando Torres Torres, was arraigned this afternoon at District Judge Joseph Zola's office. He is accused of shooting Jose Luis Romero Rivera in the neck at a garage on North Poplar Street just off Broad September 14th. Someone had dropped Romero Rivera off at General Hospital. The arrest affidavit says the victim and alleged assailant had gotten into an argument at the garage and Torres Torres pulled out a gun and fired. He's facing two counts of aggravated assault, one count of simple assault, and one of reckless endangerment. Zola set bail at $1 million. Torres Torres is in county prison tonight. A man from McAdoo is behind bars tonight after a string of robberies in Hazleton. 39-year-old Stephen Davis of McAdoo is behind bars tonight in Luzerne County after being charged with several counts of theft, criminal trespassing, criminal mischief, among other charges. Police say he stole power tools and other equipment from sheds and garages along Mead Court in Hazleton. Police Chief Frank DeAndrea said he received a phone call just before 8 a.m. from a Northgate Crime Watch member stating that they were observing Davis stealing the tools while walking from garage to garage, boat to boat. When police arrived on scene, they saw Davis carrying what they are now calling stolen items down Cybert Street, somewhere between 15th and 16th Streets. I wasn't trying to take any stuff. Get that camera out of my face. I was walking to work and I got stopped. Simple as that caught him carrying several backpacks filled with burglary tools, power tools, um, carrying a skill, you know, a reciprocating saw and a gas can. Um, he was taken into custody, transported to Hazelton Police. After Davis was arraigned at Magistrate Zola's, he told us that he was innocent. He's got off. I'm walking to work with my tools and they arrest me. They arrest me. Because they don't know how to do police work because all they depend on is rats. Get in the car. Davis was also wanted by the state police and Pottsville police for probation violations, theft, and trespassing. DeAndrea says this arrest is a perfect example of how good a crime watch works. And as DeAndrea puts it, help us help you. You see something, say something. That phone call today is what allowed us to capture this burglar and to get him in our holding cell and hopefully after a trip to the magistrate up to the county prison. After collecting all of the stolen tools, police then return them all to the owners. Davis is behind bars tonight at the Luzerne County Prison on $50,000 straight cash bail from this morning's robberies and a total of $45,000 bail from the charges from the state police. And with that latest arrest, Chief DeAndrea says the city police have been busy lately. L.A. Tyrone has more. Well, hopefully quell some of the house car break-ins that we've been having. That is Police Chief Frank DeAndrea talking about the arrest and just detailed. But he says his department has been active lately, with last Wednesday being the most active day of recent vintage. Six different homes were burglarized, to include a home on Carson between 20th and 21st, where two 82-year-old women were home at the time that the people broke into their house. We had almost uh, six different house break-ins, nine different car break-ins, a vehicle that was stolen, a family that was accosted at gunpoint. Now, just to be clear, he is not saying Davis was involved in that incident. But that was the series of events which culminated in the heights at this home on Muir Avenue. Because he had captured the stolen vehicle and the individuals that were involved in this burglary ring. The state police so graciously always back up the city of Hazleton 
and West Hazleton were all involved in this manhunt dragnet that was going on from about 6 o'clock in the morning until 8.30 when this occurred. And of course, the other thing that happened that day during that stretch of events was the accident in which DeAndrea was involved. I activated my emergency lights, my audible warning device pulled out onto South Cedar Street and traveled approximately 500 feet before the accident occurred. I was at the highway garage when it happened. Other than that, he really didn't say much about it. The two juveniles who also caused a restricted movement at the school district complex were arrested later that day. L.A. Tyrone, WILN's Late Edition. A Wilkes-Barre man was arraigned in his hospital bed this afternoon, charged with killing his wife. 48-year-old Vito Aiello was charged with one count of homicide, which will be refined to first, second, or third degree murder during his trial. Aiello was still recovering from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the face. District Judge Rick Cronauer set bail at $1 million. Aiello allegedly killed 47-year-old Jane Aiello at their Andover Street home on Thursday night. She had filed for divorce, and friends say he didn't take it well. Aiello was expected to survive. A preliminary hearing in the case has been set for Tuesday, October 8th. A special school board hearing tonight to talk insurance policies. Although there wasn't enough members to vote, board president Brian Early says they still wanted to discuss and make sure that the policy they've had since July is what they were promised. When the proposal was originally submitted uh, from Eastern Insurance, Mr. Payne, you know, it stated on there that we had a retroactive date on our excess policy of 7-1-2013. Basically what that means is any claim prior to July 1st of 2013 that hasn't been reported, that is reported um, after that, we have no coverage for. It's a $10 million gap in our insurance program. Early says although there wasn't a quorum, they hope to meet as soon as possible to rectify the situation. Steps going to be I have to talk to you know some of the board members. I had commitments from six board members that they could be here tonight, and some of them last minute changed their minds. Uh, so I'm going to have to pull the board and see when they're available. We're also going to try and set up a um, meeting where we have you know the different insurance groups come in, you know, and give us a, you know an explanation. Um, what I'd like to do is you know bring in an independent third party, you know, to look at you know what each of them saying. No date for the vote on the insurance has been set. Hazleton City Police are investigating a hit and run. Here at Diamond Avenue and Church Street, it happened about quarter to six Sunday morning. 71-year-old Leopoldo Cruz was hit by a silver 2010 Volkswagen Jetta. The driver didn't stop. Cruz received minor to moderate injuries. He was treated at Geisinger, Wyoming Valley in Plains. Police are looking for the car and its driver. If you have any information, call City Police at 570-459-4940 or Luzerne County 911. A woman was critically injured when she was hit by a car in Larksville last night. It happened about 8.15 at the intersection of Route 11 and Chestnut Street. Police did not release the woman's name, but says that she was unconscious when emergency personnel arrived. She was taken to Geisinger, Wyoming Valley in Plains. Police say the driver of the car, a blue Saturn, is cooperating with police. There will be a mass in Shenandoah celebrating the life and works of Father Walter Chizik. He spent 23 years in Soviet work and prison camps in the 40s and the 50s. He later wrote of his experiences in a book titled With God in Russia. The mass will commemorate the 50th anniversary of his return to the U.S. Dr. Marvin Mankin will also be on hand for the mass. Mankin, then a student at Chizik, were freed in exchange for two Soviet agents on October 12, 1963. The mass will be held at 2 p.m. October 13th from St. Casimir Roman Catholic Church, 229 North Jordan Street in Shenandoah. The Most Reverend John Barris, Bishop of the Allentown Diocese, will celebrate Chizik entered the Soviet Union as a missionary in 1940. When the Nazi army invaded 14 months later, Soviet officials falsely accused him of being a spy and sent him to the dreaded Lobi Anke prison in Moscow. There is an ongoing effort to have Chizik canonized as a saint. Luzerne County Judicial Services and Records Division Head Joan Hogworth has filled a couple of former row office positions. She hired James Haddock to oversee the Civil and Criminal Record offices and Mary Delinsky to run the Deeds and Will offices. Haddock will be paid $47,500. He replaces Art Bobine. Delinsky, who was serving as the Interim Human Services Division Head, will get $50,000 in the new position. She held the elected Recorder of Deeds office several years ago. Donald Williamson had been overseeing 
overseeing the Deeds Wills offices as interim director. Bobine and Williamson are both being cut from the county payroll as part of the reorganization. Interim county coroner William Lisman will become permanent coroner at a salary of $45,000. The positions filled by Hogworth were elected row offices before the home rule charter took effect. Hazleton City Police are investigating vandalism at Memorial Park at Diamond Avenue and Church Street sometime over the weekend. Vandals broke this concrete bench around the statue of Christopher Columbus. If you happen to be nearby and saw anything, call City Police at 459-4940 or Luzerne County 911. There is another effort to deal with the looming pension problem in Harrisburg. It comes from State Representative Glenn Grell, a suburban Harrisburg Republican. His bill is a three-point plan and includes borrowing $9 billion to make up for a decade of underfunding by the state and establishing a shared risk cash balance plan for future employees. It includes a lower employee contribution rate, having employees' five highest salary years used to determine their final average salary instead of the three highest years. The plan does nothing to impact current retirees' benefits. Well, sleep experts say that naps are good for you. INN's son Lee Miller has more. To take the perfect nap, find your nap nirvana. The name of the game is to be well rested. Experts who study the science of sleep recommend a few tips to maximize your snooze. Nap tip one, be consistent and conscientious of the time. Try to find a schedule for doing it. Really try to pick a time of day when it's going to work. The best time between 1 and 4 in the afternoon. Nap tip two, catch some Z's in a chair. If you're partially upright, you'll avoid falling into deep REM sleep, which experts say works against the value of a nap. Nap tip three was a surprise. Drink a cup of caffeinated coffee right before you rest. You'll wake up feeling refreshed, not groggy. Then by the time you wake up from the nap, you have the benefit of the nap and the benefit of the caffeine kicking in. One of the easiest ways to ruin a nap is sleeping too long and not watching the clock. Experts say the sweet spot is between 20 and 30 minutes, never longer than 40 minutes. But for some, finding this blissful sleep is more than just beauty rest. The Army is, is pretty much out front in, in terms of appreciating the, uh, and the importance of sleep and the benefits of sleep. Dr. Thomas Balkin studies sleep patterns at Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. He coaches the Defense Department on some of these very same sleep strategies for troops to use in the field. In, uh, for example, in military operations, we know that chronic sleep restriction is uh, the rule rather than the exception. And we t our advice is typically to nap early and nap often. Nap, get as much sleep as you can. Try much easier to do after you've perfected the nap of your dreams. In Washington, I'm Selman Miller. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Well, it hasn't rained in over a week, so will we see any rain in our future? L.A. Tyrone is in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center with the latest. L.A.? And how about it? I finally made it. I am under the pergola live as we speak. Garbarchik and I started to write a song like that, but it sounded a little bit like, a little too much like you... <laughs> No, it sounded too much like you can't always get what you want, so we decided to drop it. Anyway, hey, it's beautiful out here tonight. Upper 50s, we're about 58 degrees. If you like tonight, you're going to like about the next five or six nights. Got details for you coming up next day here. It's Late Edition on WYLR. <laughs> A winning smile. It's not the secret to success, but it sure helps. Protect your smile by visiting Dr. Weiss for complete dental services. Dr. Weiss offers a full-service denture laboratory on premises, offering dentures in one day. Three dentists, four hygienists, and a team of caring technicians and assistants specializing in quality dentures and repairs, complete general dentistry, extractions, cleaning, and caps. Dr. Weiss, where you can have new dentures in one day. Hi everybody, this is Richie Molinaro, Marketing Director for Fairway Chevrolet in Hazleton. Since Berwick Chevrolet is no longer an authorized Chevrolet dealer, I'd like to personally invite you to join our Fairway family. We'll provide you with the utmost courtesy from Chevrolet sales, service and parts to our state-of-the-art body shop and auto spa. We have over 300 new and pre-owned vehicles in stock. We're the number one commercial truck and business elite dealer in Pennsylvania and we would be honored to be your Chevrolet dealer. Heritage SureSave, your neighborhood full-service supermarket. Come see for yourself. They have the freshest selection of meats, 
cheese, and produce. Baked goods made fresh on premises, they have an in-store butcher who is happy to accommodate your special orders. Be sure to stop in and check out their unadvertised specials. You'll find them throughout the store. See their flyer for weekly specials, Heritage Sure Save, your neighborhood full-service supermarket. This week at Heritage, their super hot deal of the week is their boneless and skinless chicken breast, only $1.79 a pound. WYLN, your first choice for locally produced shows like Chef Lou, Gentastic Sweets, Off the Beaten Path, The Storm, and more. Find out how you can stretch your advertising dollars and be a part of the WYLN TV lineup. Call 570-459-1869, extension 1302. WYLN, we're your local network. Joe's not here tonight, so I'm playing the reasonable facsimile of a meteorologist, but those are really the national high temperatures. You see the southwest still baking. Other than that, most of the Midwest, the eastern seaboard, the southeast, temperatures about where you might expect uh, this time of year, maybe even a little below for that matter. Currently right now, I see 72 in uh, New York. Of course, they're nearby across the state of Pennsylvania. I'm not sure these temperatures are right, to tell you the truth. Now, this is the state high temperatures. These, I am sure, is right. Uh, these uh, happen within the uh, last 24 hours. A uh, high uh, Sealands Grove at uh, 75, and Harrisburg at 75, and Williamsport at uh, 75. And, you know, roll along here, the state low temperatures for the most part. Uh, mid to lower 50s, mid to upper 40s. See in our area, Wilkes-Barre, the warm spot at 48, and uh, Williamsport at uh, 46, 41 degrees in Mount Pocono in the last 24 hours. Reasonable storm awareness, probably looking at this and saying, gee, you saw that Friday night and Thursday night and Wednesday. We've just been in this pattern where it has just been very, very dry, uh, absolutely no chance of, uh, of rain for uh, the last several days or the next several days for that matter. Here you see the accumulated rainfall totals and there just isn't any anywhere and it's not just around here, it's around the estate as a whole. Radar, clear as a bell outside right now. In fact, if you look outside and you can look straight up into the clouds, you might remember that uh, old Don McLean song, Starry, Starry Nights, because that's what it looks like. We stand at 58 degrees here in Hazleton, dew point at 51, which again is uh, about what you might expect at this point. Now what that means is if the temperature falls below that, and it may, you'll be running in a fog here and there. Uh, regional, these were really regional highs around the uh, area today. Uh, we're not at uh, 71 in Nanticoke or 73 on both sides of the Pier Street Bridge. It's actually below that now, but that's where they peak today. These were uh, regional peaks. Uh, talking about this at uh, 5 o'clock, Muncie up to 75, Bloomsburg and uh, Danville at 73. And this is what it looked like for uh, much of the uh, region here today. Tobacco got up to a high of 67, Danville 70, Bloomsburg, uh, we just mentioned before. Uh, state temperatures right now where we stand. And again, I think these are a little old. I don't think that's quite accurate. This is, this is the radar screen right now. As you see, you got some approaching, some clouds approaching from the western part of the state. They may get here. We might have some high clouds, but that's going to be it. No chance of rain in the forecast for uh, the next uh, several days. So let's uh, skid uh, through all this here, and you'll see the uh, lows tonight about where they've been the last few days. Tomorrow's highs actually will be a little bit warmer than they have been the uh, last several days. So uh, winds, again, virtually non-existent, single digits everywhere, and not just locally, really right across the state. That's about where we stand. So we get to the seven-day forecast, and here is what it looks like. This is what is known as picture-perfect fall weather. This is absolutely perfect. Tonight, we'll go down to a low of about 49 degrees. Tomorrow, they see there, partly sunny, mostly sunny, really, in a high of 74. A few more clouds on Wednesday than today, and a little bit warmer, a high of 80, mid-50s through the period, and mid to upper 70s right through the period, all the way till Monday. We got more clouds on Monday, and 
and there might even be a chance of rain on Monday. We haven't seen that in a while. I looked at the uh, precipitation total so far for September, and they're way, way down below average. So actually, some rain would be a good thing right now. And that's what we got for you for now. Let's jump back over to the uh, interview segment with Ann. Ann. Thanks, L.A. Coming up next, the Greater Hazleton Municipal Airport Terminal is getting a facelift. Details on that and much more coming up on Late Edition. For all your projects, large and small, Bedrock Gardens has it all. They are fully stocked and ready to fill your order. Rubber mulch and rubber curbing to match. Lots of color choices to pick from. Wall stone, natural stone, full pallets ready to go. Their bins are full with rich colored quality mulch that will look wonderful all season long. Finish off your fabulous outdoor space with their quality patio furniture and easy to assemble fire pits. Everything you need for your summer projects. Delivery available or just stop by and they will load you up. Bedrock Gardens, locally owned and operated, call today. Managing risk is more than just buying an insurance policy. At Dreyfus, our approach is different. We have 25 risk management professionals who have the tools and experience to help our clients avoid and survive unexpected events. We can help you with risk transfer, OSHA requirements, safe workplace, cybersecurity, and claims management. All of these go well beyond an insurance policy. We're also independent, so we can access dozens of insurance carriers like Grange Insurance, who can insure your auto, home, business, and life. Dreyfus Insurance since 1901 and Grange Insurance since 1935. We're committed to helping you manage risk. We build tires, but not tires like anybody else. We build Cooper tires for people, not just cars. People who are chauffeurs and shuttle pilots, heavy haulers and heavy hitters. More than what your Cooper tires can do, it's about what you can do with your Cooper tires. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. Why should you visit Penn State Hazleton? Because if you come to our Penn State Day open house, there's no application fee. We have fun. We have the lion. <laughs> we have new scholarship money. Students are scoring internships all over the country. Penn State is ranked number one by corporate recruiters. And this is your chance to see campus, talk to students, meet professors, and check out everything Penn State has to offer. Penn State Hazleton. Check us out at psu.edu slash visit Hazleton. Swing to Big Bad Voodoo Daddy October 18th at the Alice E. Wilsey Performing Arts Center at the Historic Castle in Hazleton. 2013 marks the 20th anniversary of Big Bad Voodoo Daddy's remarkable arrival onto the music scene. And today, the high-energy nine-piece ensemble continues to remind the world that it's still cool to swing big band style. Join the party. Shake and move to the groove October 18th. WILN TV 35, first in live sports. Hi, I'm Ron Jaworski. For the best in local TV sports, watch WYLN TV 35. WYLN TV 35 has it covered. Hi, my name is Vince Papelli. I'm a former Philadelphia Eagle wide receiver and special teams guy. And for local sports coverage, I watch only WYLN 35. WYLN TV 35, the event, not just the highlights. Welcome back to Late Edition. The terminal at the Greater Hazleton Municipal Airport is getting a facelift with the help of students from the Hazleton Area Career Center. Demolition began today. First day of many for the city of Hazleton as they prepare to give an updated look to a nearly 60-year-old terminal at the Greater Hazleton Municipal Airport. Mayor Joey Nuzzi says there is a lot of extensive work that needs to be done to make it more attractive and convenient for those who use it. All the bathrooms are going to be handicapped accessible and redone totally, and every window is going to be replaced in the building, so it's going to be uh, pretty nice. Even, I forgot about the lights, they'll be all new too. They're removing all the drywall and uh, uh, trim around the uh, interior of the terminal, and hopefully we'll have somebody in here next week or so starting to put new, new drywall up, and uh, it's going to be a beautiful job when it's done. The renovations are all part of an initiative to improve the airport and the services it provides. To help with the demolition, juniors and seniors in the Hazleton Area Career Center are putting what they have learned in the classroom to good use. 
HVAC plumbing instructor at the Career Center, Jeff Sweeta, says this is the first time in years that the students have received this type of opportunity. Sweeta says this is the best type of education, hands-on. They're going to run into situations where I can't really, in, you know, eliminate that type of stuff in the building. Uh, so they're going to be here. We have to rip out the heating system. We're ripping out the, uh, taking the drywall down, uh, redoing the whole, ba the both bathrooms in the airport. Uh, I think this is an ideal situation for my juniors and seniors. Now we can actually work you know, on site. And I think that if this goes well, it's going to just accumulate to more and more for my students to get involved with the community. Uh, they'll feel proud about what they're going to be doing, what they're doing. Uh, you know, it's a sense of pride. And that's what I'm trying to instill in a lot of my students. We spoke with one senior who says he and his other 10 classmates are excited to take part in this and to learn from real world experiences. It's important to go out into the field and do stuff like this to uh, find ourselves careers that we could fit into and better ourselves with the uh, stuff we learned in class. We all know that things can vary out in the field and so we like to go out and do stuff such as this to ready ourselves for anything that could get thrown at us. Once the students are completed with the demolition, the Godstein Corporation will move in to start the interior carpentry and anything else that needs to be done. Project manager with Alfred Venish and Company and the city's consulting engineer, Dominic Inuzi, says this project has taken months to begin. After the Godstein Corporation signed on to sponsor it and another donor who will be helping with some of the products and materials that will be needed, he is happy to finally see it begin. This uh, building was built over 50 years ago, so they're going to uh, experience uh, what has happened to this building over the past 60 years and uh, know in, in the real life of what they're going to encounter as they uh, embark on a profession such as they're undertaking. Yanuzi says everything is progressing as planned, but there still has been no completion date established. Coming up next, Beth Mensinger is in with the first half of sports with details on where the local teams stand in their conferences. Stay tuned, more is coming up on Lead Edition. Hi sir, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Pretty good. Can I just get your name for our mailing list? Yeah, sure. Uh, Smitty Jones. Is that the same Smitty Jones that lives at 1 Phillips Street? Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. I can't complete this transaction. What do you mean? I'm just buying a candy bar. Unfortunately, your credit score is too low. What do you mean? I'm paying cash. Sir, I'm going to need you to settle down. Listen, I'm not freaking Security! out. Security! Come on. Clean up. Check out 15. Clean up. Even if your credit is this bad, we can still help. Penn Financial Group. We stop foreclosures, stop sheriff sales, reduce or eliminate your debt, and improve your credit rating, guaranteed. Call us today for a free consultation. Penn Financial Group. Get credit happy. Welcome to Robert Stevens Face and Body, Hazleton's Complete Skin Care Center. Here, our licensed specialists will consult with you to discuss your skin care needs, rejuvenate you with our special facial treatments, and apply gentle, relaxing massages to melt your tension away using all state-of-the-art technical treatments and superior skin products. So call today and let the transformation begin at Robert Stevens Face and Body, 788-7546. This week on Wellness Through Physical Therapy, Ting will bring two of his clients along. Missy and Ted, they're going to tell you about their journey to wellness with a little help from Hazleton Physical Therapy. It's coming up this week. Join us. to believe but we are halfway through the high school football season as this past week was week number five since we are at the halfway mark let's check in to see the local team standings first up in the wyoming valley conference 
A Wyoming Valley West sits at the top with a record of 4-1, and one, losing only to the Berwick Bulldogs. The Hazleton area Cougars winning the past two weeks. They own a record of 2-3. and three. The Millionaires of Williamsport are 1-3. and three. In AAA, Berwick is the lone undefeated team in the Wyoming Valley Conference with a record of 5-0. and oh. Coughlin and Crestwood tied for second, sporting four wins and only one loss. The Pittston area Patriots and Tunkhannock area both have records of one win and four losses. Dallas is the only 3A team in the conference without a win yet this season. In the single and double-A division of the conference, Lake Lehman and Northwest area are 4-1 and one, tied at the top. Nanticoke area, Myers and Hanover area sit tied as well, sporting two wins and three losses. Wyoming area and the Holy Redeemer Royals both with only one win. Wyoming with four losses, Redeemer with three. And lastly, another squad looking for their first win on the season, GAR. Now let's take a look at District's 11, District 11's Anthracite Football League. The Monoy area Golden Bears sit atop of the league as they are undefeated, playing four out of five league games so far this year. Close behind them, the Jim Thorpe Olympians in the Anthracite Football League. They are undefeated, but they did suffer a loss to Blue Mountain of the Berks Inter-County Conference in Week 2. The Schuylkill Haven Hurricanes hold a league record of 3-1 and one falling to North Schuylkill earlier this season, and North Schuylkill is right behind them at 3-2, and two, coming off a barn burner loss against Marion Catholic last Friday, 27-26. Last year's Anthracite League champion Tamaqua Area Blue Raiders off to a slow start this season with an overall record of 3-2 and two as they are 1-2 and two in the league. Single A Marian Catholic is also 1-2 and two in the league and the Blue Devils of Shenandoah Valley are 1-3. and three. Two other teams, Minersville and Panther Valley, are winless thus far in 2013 in the AFL. There's big news today for Bloomsburg University running back Franklin Quita. This past weekend, the senior was not only named the NCAA Division II Offensive Player of the Week by the Beyond Sports Network, he also became the first player to surpass 6,000 yards in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Quita had 11 carries and ran for 205 yards in the Huskies' 56-10 win over Lock Haven, scoring three rushing touchdowns and one 33-yard reception for the score. He also moved to 13th in all time in Division II history. In the process, after Saturday's win, the Huskies broke the top 10 in the American Football Coaches Association Top 25 poll. They sit at number nine. Undefeated Bloomsburg faces Gannon next week. And there are only five more days until the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins kick off their 2013-14 season as they head to Bridgeport to face off with the Sound Tigers Saturday night. The Pens overtook the Hershey Bears yesterday in their final preseason game at Mohegan Sun Arena with a score of 2-1. to one in making their final preparations. Twelve players were cut from the roster earlier today. Chris Manella and Denver Madderson were also loaned to the Wheeling Nailers of the AA Hockey League ECHL. In three preseason games, Manderson tallied a goal and an assist, while Manella dressed for three of those matches. As of right now, there are 27 players making up the Penguins roster. Stay tuned and back next with tonight's recaps. Heritage Hills 13th Annual Alzheimer's Memory Walk is being held Saturday, October 5th at Heritage Hills Senior Community in Weatherly. Registration is at 9 and the three-mile walk through picturesque Weatherly begins at 10. There will be a tricky tree auction from 9 until noon. For more information, please contact Lisa Marie at 570-427-4500. Join us this week for the season four premiere of Women Today. Kathy Colangelo of Your Life Is Now Life Coaching is going to start us off with new beginnings, a brand new segment, Cooking with Kathy. We'll get creative with Chris one last time, tell you about a brand new segment that's coming up, and of course, we've got great giveaways. It's all coming up, the season four premiere of Women Today.
Welcome back to Late Edition. Hazleton area made an arrest in a garage shooting, shooting two weeks ago. Today, this man, 27-year-old Fernando Torres Torres, was arraigned this afternoon at District Judge Joseph Zola's office. He's accused of shooting Jose Luis Romero Rivera in the neck at a garage on North Poplar Street just off Broad September 14th. Someone had dropped Romero Rivera off at General Hospital. The arrest affidavit says the victim and the assa alleged assailant had gotten into an argument at the garage and Torres Torres pulled out a gun and fired. He's facing two counts of aggravated assault, one count of simple assault, and one of reckless endangerment. Zola set bail at $1 million cash. Torres Torres is in county prison tonight. A man from McAdoo is behind bars tonight after a string of robberies in Hazleton this morning. 39-year-old Stephen Davis of McAdoo is behind bars tonight in Luzerne County after being charged with several counts of theft, criminal trespassing, criminal mischief, among other charges. Police say he stole power tools and other equipment from sheds and garages along Mead Court in Hazleton. Police Chief Frank DeAndrea said he received a phone call just before 8 a.m. from a Northgate Crime Watch member stating that they were observing Davis stealing the tools while walking from garage to garage, boat to boat. When police arrived on scene, they saw Davis carrying what they are now calling stolen items down Cybert Street, somewhere between 15th and 16th Streets. I wasn't trying to take any stuff. Get that camera out of my face. I was walking to work, and I got stopped. Simple as that. Caught him carrying several backpacks filled with burglary tools, power tools, um, carrying a skill, you know, a reciprocating saw and a gas can. Um, he was taken into custody, transported to Hazelton Police. After Davis was arraigned at Magistrate Zola's, he told us that he was innocent. He's got <laughs> off. I'm walking to work with my tools and they arrest me. They arrest me because they don't know how to do police work because all they depend on is rats. Get in the car. Davis was also wanted by the state police and Pottsville police for probation violations, theft, and trespassing. DeAndrea says this arrest is a perfect example of how good a crime watch works. And as DeAndrea puts it, help us help you. You see something, say something. That phone call today is what allowed us to capture this burglar and to get him in our holding cell and hopefully after a trip to the magistrate up to the county prison. After collecting all of the stolen tools, police then returned them all to the owners. Davis is behind bars tonight at the Luzerne County Prison on $50,000 straight cash bail from this morning's robberies and a total of $45,000 bail from the charges from the state police. And with that latest arrest, Chief DeAndrea says the city police have been busy lately. L.A. Tyrone has more. This, this will hopefully quell some of the house car break-ins that we've been having. That is Police Chief Frank DeAndrea talking about the arrest and just detailed. But he says his department has been active lately, with last Wednesday being the most active day of recent vintage. Six different homes were burglarized, to include a home on Carson between 20th and 21st, where two 82-year-old women were home at the time that the people broke into their house. We had almost uh, six different house break-ins. Nine different car break-ins, a vehicle that was stolen, a family that was accosted at gunpoint. Now, just to be clear, he is not saying Davis was involved in that incident. But that was the series of events which culminated in the heights at this home on Muir Avenue. Because he had captured the stolen vehicle and the individuals that were involved in this burglary ring. The state police so graciously always back up the city of Hazleton and West Hazleton were all involved in this manhunt dragnet that was going on from about 6 o'clock in the morning until 8.30 when this occurred. And of course the other thing that happened that day during that stretch of events was the accident in which DeAndrea was involved. I activated my emergency lights, my audible warning device pulled out onto South Cedar Street and traveled approximately 500 feet before the accident occurred. I was at the highway garage when it happened. Other than that, he really didn't say much about it. The two juveniles who also caused a restricted movement at the school district complex were arrested later that day. L.A. Tehran, WILN's Late Edition.
A Wilkes-Barre man was arraigned in his hospital bed this afternoon, charged with killing his wife. 48-year-old Vito Aiello was charged with one count of homicide, which will be refined to first, second, or third degree murder during his trial. Aiello is still recovering from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the face. District Judge Rick Cronauer set bail at $1 million. Aiello allegedly killed 47-year-old Jane Aiello at their Andover Street home on Thursday. She had filed for divorce and friends say he didn't take it well. Aiello is expected to survive. A preliminary hearing in the case has been set for Tuesday, October 8th. And that is a look at tonight's top stories coming up next. Will the government shut down in just under an hour? And what does it mean for us as, Obam as Obamacare takes effect? But first, let's check back in with L.A. Tyrone in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center. L.A.? Well, I'll tell you, Ann, it's about 1035 on the eastern seaboard right now. And right here, there is just a slight hint of a fall chill in the air. And not really anything else. Skies are perfectly wide open and blue, clear as a bell. It's going to be that way for the next several nights. Got details coming up in about 10 minutes. Stay here. It's Late Edition on WYLN. Bottleneck Saloon and Eatery, now open on the square in Wilkes-Barre. Stop by to see us for lunch to break up and brighten up your day. Or get it to go. Our lunch menu ranges from light to all right. With signature salads, saloon-style sandwiches, crunchy rings, nipas, best wings, and draft drinks to power you through the afternoon. After work, we're there to help you unwind with friends. What little bottlenecks in your day? Bottleneck Saloon and Eatery, now in the square. See you there. Tri-County Business Machines has been serving the Hazleton area with office supplies and furniture for over 35 years. We are your local Kia Sera dealer for all your digital Kia Sera copiers, printers, and faxes. For exceptional reliability, sales, and service, the call to make is to Tri-County Business Machines. Tri-County Business Machines, keeping your office up to speed. Tri-County Business Machines, located at 117 East Broad Street, Hazleton. Phone 459-0754 or visit us on the web at tricountybm.com. Swing to Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, October 18th at the Alice E. Wilsey Performing Arts Center at the Historic Castle in Hazleton. 2013 marks the 20th anniversary of Big Bad Voodoo Daddy's remarkable arrival onto the music scene. And today, the high-energy nine-piece ensemble continues to remind the world that it's still cool to swing big band style. Join the party. Shake and move to the groove October 18th. Join us this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. You'll meet Marinda, a busy, professional working mom who is feeling a lot better due to good chiropractic care. Her story this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. Join us. Welcome back to Late Edition. It appears we're just over an hour away from a government shutdown, and we're just over an hour from the first day of so-called Obamacare. INN's Phil Doherty and Tom Foreman have details on both. In just hours and for the first time in 17 years, the U.S. will likely be in a partial shutdown mode. Early this morning, the Republican-led House approved a stopgap proposal that would fund the government through mid-December and delay the Affordable Care Act by one year. Senate Democrats rejected that proposal this afternoon. Uh, there's not a, a, a world leader, uh, if you took a poll, uh, who would say that uh, it would be responsible or uh, consistent with America's leadership in the world for us not to pay our bills. Uh, we are the foundation of the world economy and the world financial system. And uh, our currency is the reserve currency of the world. This means 80,000 federal workers could be told not to come to work tomorrow. National parks and call centers and the IRS may close. Passport renewal may become more difficult. The backlog of veterans' disability claims could get worse and home buyers trying to get FHA loans would face delays. Meanwhile, the new health care exchanges in the President's Affordable Care Act debut tomorrow. 
Technical glitches may make it difficult for people to enroll. In any case, experts say don't expect a flood of people to enroll in the first week. And when you are ready, Tom Foreman shows you what to expect. Despite all these monumental changes to health care, most of us who have insurance probably won't see much change. Maybe some modifications, but this is really about the 48 million people who are uninsured, about half of whom are now expected to buy insurance through these health care marketplaces. And let me point out, about 7 million are expected to do so by the end of the year. That's how fast this is happening. So how do we imagine these marketplaces? Think about a store where you can buy one of four different insurance plans, bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. Here's the difference between them. Look at the bronze plan over here. If you buy this, you're going to have a lower monthly premium, but when you go to the doctor, your copay, your deductibles, your other fees will be higher. At the other end of the spectrum, if you buy the platinum plan, you're going to spend more on your monthly premium, but when you go to the doctor, you'll pay less money. This won't be exactly the same state to state to state because local companies are involved. So you can't call a family member living up in New Hampshire, for example, and say, what are you doing? Because it may be different in Mississippi. But this should be the same no matter where you live. There should be no higher premiums if you get sick. There should be no denial of coverage if you have a pre-existing condition. And you should have no fees for preventive care. If you get inoculations for your kids, if you get a mammogram, if you get a routine physical, you shouldn't be paying for that under this new plan. Still, there is money to be paid. And for a lot of people who don't make much money, this may seem very expensive. That's why the government's going to help out. If you make $46,000 a year as an individual or $94,000 a year as a family of four or less, the government's going to give you a refund to help pay for your insurance under this new plan. But no matter what happens, you're going to have to get involved. Even if you live in one of the dozens of states that have said they want nothing to do with Obamacare, you're still going to be involved. All that means is your state government will not be involved in organizing this health care marketplace. The federal government will do it there instead of your state government. You'll go to a federal website to sign up. But you will have to do something, otherwise the federal government is going to fine you for not having insurance. That's what this is all about, and that's why it really is decision time, coast to coast. Some important information there. Coming up next, Beth Mensinger is back at the desk with the second half of sports. Stay tuned, you're watching Late Edition only on WYLN. Cause I hear there's no mistake You can't buy it better You can't buy it better than Barber Ford Barber Ford Route 309 in Hazleton And on Route 11 in Exeter your family's good health begins with a great team. That team is the Alliance Medical Group. We're the first health care provider in the greater Hazleton area to offer a fully integrated approach to family and specialized medical care. Our expanding network of more than 30 physicians and specialists are trusted by thousands for routine and complex medical treatments. For a convenient appointment at any of our 15 regional offices, simply call 501-4-AMG. Alliance Medical Group. Your health. That's our specialty. Now, Hazel Park Spring Water is proud to announce that they are the official water of the WYLN Sports Crew and available for home delivery through JW Wargo Spring Water Delivery and JoJo's Beverage. Since 1915, the Chrysler family has been serving the area with quality meats. The tradition continues today with five generations at Hazel Park Quality Meats, 260 Washington Avenue, West Hazleton, and Reading Specialty Meats, located at 216 East 4th Street in Berwick. Here are some of this week's specials. As a diabetic, where do I turn for the special health care products and advice I need? Come into your nearby Good Neighbor Pharmacy. We specialize in the unique concerns and needs you have as a diabetic patient. Your Good Neighbor Pharmacist has a fully trained staff, stocks a broad selection of the products you need, and takes a personal interest in your health and well-being.
Third Base Luncheonette, still making memories after all these years. WYLNCA 35's children's programming is designed with the specific purpose of serving the educational and informational needs of children. In compliance with FCC guidelines, a copy of the children's programming report is on file for public inspection at WYLN, 1057 East 10th Street, Hazleton, PA, during normal business hours, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. Bad news from over this weekend, Elsie Greenwood has died. The legendary defensive end made up of one, of one quarter of the Pittsburgh Steelers steel curtain defense of the 1970s. The Allegheny County Medical Examiner's Office said Greenwood died Sunday from undisclosed causes just before noon at UPMC Presbyterian Hospital. Greenwood played for Pittsburgh from 1969 through 81. He was a six-time Pro Bowler and two-time All-Pro. Greenwood played for the Steelers from from whom he, Mean Joe Green, Ernie Holmes, and Dwight White formed the bedrock of the defense that helped turn a perennial loser into a dynasty. L.C. Greenwood was 67. The Jets' Mark Sanchez is out for the season. He decided to have surgery on his shoulder after attempting rehab. After surgery, he'll need a four- to six-month rehab. The Jets are still on the hook for his $8 million salary for this year. The Philadelphia Phillies will not be bringing back pitching coach Rich Doobie. The Phillies finished the season at 73-89 and in fourth place in the National League, 23 games behind first place Atlanta. The Phillies starting pitcher, pitchers had the second highest ERA in the league at 441. Doobie spent the last nine years at, as pitching coach. It was the longest time at that position for the Phillies in the last 35 years and tied for the longest in club history with Cy Perkins from 1946 to 54 and Ray Ripplemeyer from 1970 to 78. The Chicago Cubs fired manager Dale Swam on t uh, today. They finished last in the NL Central for the first time in seven years. GM Theo S. Epstein said the decision to find a new manager wasn't made because of wins and losses, but part of a long-term building plan. The Cubs finished 66-96 and 96 this year. In his two-year run, the Cubs went 127 and 197. The Mets are keeping Terry Collins as their manager. He got a two-year extension today with a club option for 2016. The Mets finished 74-88 and 88 for their fifth consecutive losing season. Collins is 225 and 261 as the Mets manager. His entire coaching staff will also be back next year. The San Francisco Giants has given Hunter Pence a five-year extension. The outfielder will, be, get, will get paid $16 million in 2014 and $18.5 million each of the remaining four years. He's got no signing bonus. The 30-year-old hit 282 with 26 home runs and 22 steals. He played in all 162 games this season and has never played in fewer than 154. The Minnesota Twins gave manager Ron Gardenhire a two-year extension. The entire coaching staff is coming back as well. The Twins finished 66 and 96 this year. They've lost 90 games three straight years. Gardenhire has been Minnesota skipper since the 2002 season. Major League Baseball Executive Vice President Rob Manfred has been named the MLB's Chief Operating Officer. That's led to speculation Manfred is being groomed by Bud Selig to be commissioner. Selig announced last week that he would retire following the 2014 season. The New York Knicks have picked up the option on coach Mike Woodson's contract for the 2014-15 season. Woodson led the Knicks to an 18-6 and mark as interim coach after beginning the 2011-12 season as an assistant under Mike D'Antoni. He was made head coach during the 2012 offseason, signed a two-year contract with an option for a third year. As coach of the Atlanta Hawks from 2004 to 2010, Woodson compiled a 2000, or, excuse me, 206 win 286 loss record. And the University of Connecticut fired football coach Paul Pasqualoni today. The Huskies got blown out 41-12 to to Buffalo Saturday and are 0-4 on the season. Pasqualoni was in his third season at UConn and had a record of 10-18. and The school will pay him $750,000 to buy out his contract. Offensive coordinator TJ Weiss will take over as interim head coach. And tonight we do have a short scoreboard for our national sports. In Monday Night Football, it's a battle of the Beatings, the Saints hosting the Miami Dolphins. 
Nola up 18 in the third quarter. Darren Sproles having a big night for the Saints with seven receptions from Drew Brees for 114 yards and two touchdowns. And it is do or die game 163 for the Rays and the Rangers. It's the first extra game in four years to determine a playoff berth. Whoever wins will take on the Cleveland Indians who have the top AL wildcard spot. That game on Wednesday and right now Joe Madden's Rays ahead in the eighth. David Price on the mound. Evan Longoria going two for three with a homer and two runs batted in as the Rays are leading. Stay tuned, LA is coming back with a recap of your weather. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated at 542 North Wyoming Street in Hazleton, serving the greater Hazleton area since 1890 and still family owned and operated, offers convenient parking, handicapped accessibility, seating for over 150 people, casket cremation product showrooms to accommodate traditional cremation and pre-planned funerals. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated, 570-454-3341. Your family's good health begins with a great team. That team is the Alliance Medical Group. We're the first health care provider in the greater Hazleton area to offer a fully integrated approach to family and specialized medical care. Our expanding network of more than 30 physicians and specialists are trusted by thousands for routine and complex medical treatments. For a convenient appointment at any of our 15 regional offices, simply call 501-4-AMG. Alliance Medical Group. Your health. That's our specialty. What do you see? Perhaps you're noticing the rusted fender or the dented side panel. Maybe the first thing your eye goes to is the worn interior. But look closer and you'll see something else. Value. At Harry's You Pull It, we see value in your old car and so will others. It's the reason we offer top dollar for your car. Junker, clunker, piece of tin, your car may have many names, but at Harry's, there's only one that matters. Value. Visit one of our three locations today in Hazleton, Pennsburg, and Allentown. The WILN Weather Center brings you precise weather information you need to plan your day. And now you can get the latest weather conditions online anytime at WILNTV.com. Utilizing the latest technology, meteorologist Joe Garbacic brings you the most accurate weather information available, including webcams to view current road conditions and detailed maps of our area. For a full detailed and accurate daily weather report, watch WILN Weather with Joe Garbacic weekdays at 5 and 10 and online anytime at WILNTV.com. This is what the radar map looks like right now. If we were to cut out a little bit wider, you'd see the whole state is showing exactly this, virtually nothing, which also means that that's going to be that way in Pittsburgh as well for the all-important uh, wildcard playoff between the Pirates and the Reds tomorrow night. So there's not going to be any uh, rain delays or anything tomorrow night in Pittsburgh as the Pirates play the Reds. 57 degrees down. We're uh, Now we're uh, down a couple of degrees from about 25 minutes ago. Of course, the highs for the day haven't changed. Uh, you'll notice the, uh, view po uh, the uh, dew points, that is. 54 in Natticoke, 48 Wilkes-Barre, Kingston, Pittston. Uh, we uh, saw this already this afternoon, the highs for today, but in the event you missed it, that is what they were at the time. Showing dew points tonight, all upper 40s, low 50s. And again, if the uh, temperature goes below the dew point, it means it's gonna be foggy, so keep that in mind if you are headed anywhere right now this is what you're looking at uh, statewide and again i think that's probably a few hours old because i don't really think it's 75 degrees in uh Celia's grove right now but uh this is what we're looking at uh right now radar uh you're seeing some of those green things there the real meteorologists call them um what's the word clutter Useless clutter, ground effect. It uh, is not really raining in any of those areas. It's not raining in a long time. They see some uh, clouds will be rolling in. Like some out of some uh, clouds tomorrow night in Pittsburgh, but no rain or anything as uh, the Reds and the Pirates play that uh, one-game playoff tomorrow. Uh, this is what uh, it uh, will look like over the next 48 hours, pretty much as it's looked over the last 48 hours. Low temps tonight where they've been tomorrow a little interesting though because tomorrow as you see here we've got a, a bunch of uh, 70s 
and that's a little bit warmer than it usually is for this period. We may even hit 80 in some spots of our viewing area, and south of our viewing area, down around Pittsburgh, or down around Harrisburg, Philadelphia, it's a pretty good bet that they're going to see 80s there. Wind speeds virtually non-existent, no big deal whatsoever. Let's get to that all-important seven-day forecast, and here it comes right now. And it is pretty much like the last seven days. You've got uh, partly to mostly sunny right through the period. And uh, highs in the mid-70s, uh, up to 80 degrees uh, the uh, day after tomorrow. And then finally, all good things have to come to an end. And it looks like by the time we get to Monday, it's going to be additional clouds and maybe even rain. We can actually use it because it's been way below average. Yeah, but it's been cold. I noticed the grass is still wet, so I think that's we're... true. That's true. I don't that's think there's right. much of a multitasker tonight. Honestly, he could do it all. I like to do this every he once in a while. He could do it all. So he does. He does. You know, Joe. Joe might be off guard. You know, I hope he's feeling better. But you know, when you hear, I think he does get a little excited. You know, mm -hmm. gets to do some weather. And He'll be back tomorrow. I'm sure I'll go back on my hole in the control room. Where I <laughs> Have a good so, night. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow.